time of trouble. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming to Faith Christian Fellowship today. If you're a first-time visitor, we say thank you so much for coming. Um, we started a series last week. We had baptism last week. We started a series called Storm Stories. And today, I, I want to talk to you about uh, a few different things, uh, b- basically our decisions and, and making decisions, and we're going to talk about that a little bit. But the Bible is full of lessons on storms, okay? It's full of lessons on storms. Why? Because we see it a metaphor, we see metaphor, we always, well, we're going through a storm, right? We say that, right? We're going through a hard time, or we're going through a storm. It's a metaphor for our own personal experiences. We, we, we see that, and I believe that's why the Bible has so much to talk about storms, you know? Uh, we, we, we describe life problems as storms, difficult situations as storms, different uh, things we encounter in storms, financial storms, marriage storms, health storms. Emotional and mental storms are some of, the, uh, some of the most vicious storms that we go through. It's emotional storms that, that nobody sees. Nobody understands it. Come on, somebody. We don't understand. We got, we, we, that's even, even that, we've seen recently even uh, uh, this, this explosion of, 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 of uh, you know, past, especially with pastors and leaders and things in the church committing suicide. And, and it's because the church don't want to talk about stuff is what it is. Because we've long saw mental health issues as some type of taboo for, for whatever reason. But there's real storms. There's a real devil. There's real things. There's real health issues. There's real financial problems and emotional issues. There's real, right? Rubber hits the road. It's just life. Come on. Everybody say life. <laughs> And life happens, right? But I'm thankful today that the Bible doesn't have anything, or it's not silent on these situations, aren't you? I'm thankful. And they come in all different types of sizes. and Some are more disruptive than others. Some is more severe than others. Some seem threatening at first, but ultimately <laughs> turn out to be a blessing. Isn't it amazing how things turn around for our good? <laughs> So we've been talking about storms. So go with me to Luke chapter 6. Let's go there today. You guys all right today? Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Luke chapter 6, verse 47. Amen. We're going to start here and just talk just a moment, and then we're going to head into a a very familiar passage of scriptures or a story that we're going to talk about in depth today. Luke chapter 6, verse 46 says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord? And do not do the things that I have said to you. Verse 46. Verse 47. Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. On the rock. And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it, for it was found on the rock. But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation against which the stream beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Storms, if you notice here, storms come to both structures. There's, there's some things they share in common, you know. They, they, they both heard. They, uh, they both were building something. They, 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 both were, uh, uh, they both were hearing the word. They both were building something. They, they both had outcomes, but the outcomes were different. But I want you to see from this passage of Scripture that the storms come to us all. The person that's wise, the person that's unwise, the person that's building their house deep and digging their foundations deep, And the person that's building their house on the sand, we both are experiencing storms. Amen. God never promised us a trouble-free life. That's a fairy tale gospel. Now, but God did give us faith. Faith never puts me in a bubble. Ever. But it gives me a tool. To be able to use against the storms of life. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said these things I've spoken to you. That in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. The psalmist wrote. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. (laughs) Many are the afflictions. Well that's a good word. We just go home on that one. right? (laughs) Praise God. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers them out of them all. 
I like that. Yea, though I walk the valley of the shadow of death, I will what? Fear no evil. Though I walk what? Through it. So sometimes, yes, thank God, we get delivered out of situations, but sometimes we got to get delivered through them. Right? We're in the hands of our Father. Listen to this. In this book, Good to Great, Jim Collins recounts a conversation he had with Admiral Jim Stockdale. He was a decorated war, vet, war veteran and the highest ranking U.S. military officer to be imprisoned during the Vietnam War. Stockdale was a prisoner of war for eight years and was tortured more than 20 times. As the commanding officer in that setting, Stockdale helped as many men survive as he could. Collins wrote, What separable people Stockdale taught me is what separates people Stockdale taught me is not the presence or absence of difficulty, but how they deal with the inevitable difficulties of life. In wrestling with life challenges, the Stockdale paradox. You must re retain faith that you will prevail in the end and you must also confront the brutal facts of your current reality has proved powerful for coming back from, difficulties, from, from difficulties not weakened but stronger. You, you see what I'm saying? Is, is, that, is that no matter what we're facing, we ha and the Bible is a realistic book. Let's just be honest. It's a realistic book. It's not, so, listen, we read all kinds of stories. It's ancient literature. We're reading it, right? We're reading the stories of their day. And it doesn't hide away from this stuff. It, it gives us real life people and what really happened in their lives and, and, and how they overcame, right? No matter what we're facing, that's what he said there. He said, no matter what, we, 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 we have a reality. There's a reality. We, faith never, never tells you, you know what, you don't have a problem. You're just lying. Right? Doesn't, it's okay to face reality. Can I get a good amen here? Jesus said you face your mountain. You speak to mountains, not run away from mountains. Hello. I've wanted to run away before. How about you? Helen Keller stated this, a happy life consists not in the absence, but in the mastery of hardships. And I think that's true. Amen. So God is not just the basis of our optimism. He is our reality. I want you to understand that today. Now, let's talk today about the storm story. Storm front. We're going to talk about storm front today. Storm fronts are things that come in that causes the climate... The climate to be right for a storm to happen. Now, we've all made some stupid decisions before in our lives. Anybody say amen? Now, I really wanted to be, listen, I really wanted to be, um, I really wanted to cause this stupid decisions and very stupid decisions, all right? But I was, I, I really wanted to stay pr proper here. So I, I want to talk to you today about decisions, decisions. And we're going to go to Jonah in just a second, but. I first want to talk about unwise decisions. Now, these are what we call stupid decisions. Uh, unwise decisions. Now, now, this decision, the decisions we're making here, they're not being, not being done intentionally, not being disobedient intentionally. Okay? Not being disobedient intentionally. I, I, I looked at the word accident. The word accident means this. Unfortunate and unplanned event resulting from carelessness or ignorance. Has anybody ever been careless or ignorant and made a really stupid, not a really stupid decision. We're going to call it what? A stupid decision. An unwise decision. Right? I, I got to lay this out there in order to get to Jonah because Jonah, got, he made some really stupid decisions. But we can find ourselves there also. <laughs> Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Yeah, see, marriage storm. Maybe you're just not making the right decisions regarding your fishing time or your hunting time. Now, I'm just saying, there's nothing wrong with fishing and hunting. I got, I got, I got, I got darts being... being <laughs> doom, 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 doom. No, I'm just saying, it's not the devil. It's not the devil. It's us making some wrong decisions. Now, there's nothing wrong with going fishing or hunting. Please don't get me wrong here. Amen. <laughs> uh, you, know, you, ever, you, ever, you ever had your wife say that? It's your tone of voice that you use. Has any man in this room ever said, I'm, I'm just looking to the guys today. What tone? Did anybody ever say what tone of voice? I mean, anybody? 
Come on, guys, guys. All right, look, I want all the ladies to look around here. We don't mean anything uh, intentional by this. <laughs> but, but <laughs> I mean, like financial storms, right? I mean, you're just not paying attention to things. Maybe you're not paying attention where you're spending your money. You don't mean to intentionally be disobedient. It's just happening. So, so let me give you a, a couple things here. Look what the Proverbs 19.3 says about this right here. This is good. Uh, Proverbs 19.3. People ruin their lives by their own foolishness. And then they're angry at the Lord. Well, we're going to sit right here. Amen. We'll go ahead. We'll get ready for the... All right. Look what it says in the Message Bible. I like this. The Message Bible. I think I gave you. People ruin their lives by their own what? So why does God always get blamed? Amen. So what's needed? Let me just give you... This is not on the screen today. But what's needed, I don't think I put this on the screen. What's needed, just real quick, because I'm going to get to Jonah. Well, what's needed? Uh, number one, you've got to know yourself. Let me just give you these quick. It, it, I'm talking about storms. And a lot of storms that we have in our lives is not the devil. It's actually us. It's us. We create our own storms. Right? Number one, you've got to know yourself. Know what you can handle. I know this is going to be very practical today. You know, Jesus said he gave five, three. Remember the ta- guys with the talents? Remember this guy? He gave one guy five, one guy three, and one guy one. You ever, it says he, and, and you can read it and study it on your own. It says he, he gave it to them according to their ability. The three-talent guy could never be a five-talent guy because it wasn't in his ability to do it. The the one-talent guy couldn't be the three or the five. It didn't mean he couldn't increase it to a three. It didn't mean he couldn't increase it to a five. But the guy that was five is going to be, if he's increased, it's going to be what? It's going to be a ten-talent guy. Listen, just know your limits and know know what you can do. Just know what you can do. Maybe you can't handle that job right now. Maybe you can't handle that relationship right now. Just learn to say no. Number two, pay attention. Just real quick, I'm just giving you, just pay attention. Just pay attention. Just pay attention. Sometimes we go through life not paying much attention. I know this is simple, but pay attention. Guys, pay attention to our tone. Well, see, I, all the ladies, I'm getting on, my, on the, the ladies' side right now. Just pay attention to the tone. Or pay attention to your life. Pay attention to what's going on around you. Amen. Pay attention. Number three is seek counsel. Seek counsel. Just real quick, just going through this. Seeking counsel. And a multitude of counselors, there's safety. Right? Just seeking good counsel. So how do I not make unwise decisions? The way you don't make unwise decisions is by seeking good counsel. And a multitude of counselors, there are safety. Seek out trusted individuals that you can get counsel from how about our seasoned saints in the room all the 65 and older raise your hand 65 and older come on all you 65 and older raise your hand these let's give them a good hand clap (laughs) we have journey groups this week too right i think we do Uh, yep sharon says yep we do but there's a lot of wisdom with that right seeking counsel on the last thing just learn from your mistakes just learn from your mistakes. Well, that's just some simple things about making unwise decisions. Now, let's move on to the next thing, which is really what I want to talk about this morning. It's just disobedient decisions. Disobedient decisions. So go with me to the book of Jonah today. You may need to go back to your table of contents if you want to. It's a minor prophets in the end part of the Old Testament. Okay? Right after Obadiah... And before Micah, there's a little book, four-chapter book called Jonah. Again, there's no, I know you don't turn there much, but it's a minor prophet, major message. Let's go to Jonah chapter 1. Let's look here real quick. Now, <laughs> what do you say disobedience? We've all been here. These are the really stupid decisions. When I talk about disobedience today, I'm talking about willful neglect, a refusal to do what we know we need to do, a conscious choice to do something that, that we know is, is wrong and we do it anyway. Okay? Now, this name, you may not be here today, 
uh, I may not be here today. We, I'm, we may be, a lot of us not here today in this sense, but there may be a, ch- a chance that you could be here this way today or tomorrow or the next week. And we can learn a lot from Jonah. Now, I, I really would, I, I can't get bogged down because Jonah's a very interesting book. Okay, a very, very interesting book. Uh, I can't do a book study on Jonah, but I do want to mention some things to you as we go. This is what we have with Jonah. He is a man that's being disobedient and it's causing problems, major issues. Let's start in Jonah chapter 1. We're going to read the so we're going to read 17 verses here. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. And he went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. And he, so he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken up. Then the mariners, or the sailors, were afraid, and every man cried out to his God, and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down in the lowest part of the ship and laid down and was fast asleep. So the captain came to him and said to him, What do you mean that you're sleeping? Arise, call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that, you may, that we may not perish. And they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots that we may know for, those, for, for whose cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lot and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Please tell us for, for, whose, cause is this, for whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation? What, where did you come from? What, what's your, where do you come from? Where's your country at? And what people are you? So he said to them, I am a Hebrew. I fear the Lord, the God of heaven that may, who made the sea and dry land. Then the men who were exceedingly afraid said to him, Why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then he said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may calm for us? For the sea was growing more temptuous. And he said to them, Pick up and throw me into the sea, and the sea will become calm for you, for I know this great tempest is because of me. Nevertheless, the men rowed harder to the land, but they could not, for the sea continued to grow more temptuous against them. Therefore they cried out to the Lord and said, We pray, O Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life, and do not charge us with innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done it as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah, threw him into the sea, and it ceased from its raging. And the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Now, there's many different ways we can look at this. This is a very interesting book. Number one is, is that Jonah is known as a prophet, but he's not just making declarations like the other prophets. It's actually a story about him. And what's real interesting about Jonah, it's actually a satire. It's like Saturday Night Live is what's going on here. Now, again, I don't want to get too deep in this because I can actually take this and we could learn a bunch. It would take us five and six, seven, eight weeks on this. But what it is is that Jonah, if we start looking at it, because uh, the way this thing is set up and this story begins to be told, it's like he's running away from God. Can't, you can't run away from God, A, eh? but he's running away from God, thinking that he can run away from God, right? Trying to get away from God, but yet God intercepts him in the middle of it by providing a fish. Now, listen, we, our story of Jonah is like the Veggie Tail version. But, but I want to show you this picture. This, in, in the Hebrew mind, uh, this, this is what Jonah would actually, you can put that up there. It's the ancient Near Eastern thought, uh, the other one. We'll, we'll go to that one in a second. Yes. Now, this is, an, this is an ancient Near Eastern thought drawing of what this was like. We had this sea monster. Remember now, you got to kind of hear last week's message. Remember I talked about how the waters represent chaos, right? We have this chaotic waters. We have this, and the Hebrews thought that in the sea lived these sea monsters and these sea beasts, right? And, 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 and so, so, so we can see the chaos and all that's going on in this picture. Get it in your mind. We got to read the Bible like a good Hebrew, and what we do, we read the Bible with the nice fish, with, this, with, you know, with the smile and Jonah in the belly. When there's a lot going on in this book. Now let me give you a few things here real quick. 
let's put up the other picture real quick. Now look, this is what happens with him. He is in Joppa. It says he went down to Joppa, and he's 550 miles away from Nineveh on land. He could go on land that way. Instead, he went 2,500 miles the opposite direction. Tarshish was the farthest point west, the farthest point west of the known land. They didn't know anything past that. So he was running to the ends of the earth. Running away from God. Making really stupid decisions. Well, what's real interesting, by and far, especially in the ancient Hebrew mind, they didn't like the sea. They didn't want to get on the sea because they thought that in the sea was these sea monsters. So he goes and risks it all to get away, making, you ever make, this is the point, you ever make decisions about your life, you do really stupid things and don't really take it into it, and you will actually go in an opposite direction, even if it means your life, and you'll take things in the farthest way to try to get away from it? Amen. Back to some definitions. Nineveh was the capital city of Assyria. Fierce, aggressive empire. Neighboring nations were very afraid of Nineveh. Again, a Tarshish, it's, 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 this, it's Spain, modern-day Spain, and it's the farthest known point west. Now, let me just show you this real quick, this, just kind of setting this up. Go back to Jonah chapter 1 again in verse 1. Now, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai. Now, this is setting this all up. Remember now, his name, the word Jonah, his name means dove. Innocent. Amittai, son of Amittai, means huh, truthfulness and faithfulness. So we have this story about this prophet. His name is Innocent and a son of truthfulness and faithfulness. And everything about the story is him being acting opposite than being true and being faithful. It's a picture of us. Do you know when they would read this? They would read this on Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur was the day of atonement, the day that their sins were forgiven, the day, of, the day that they repented. And you know what book they read? The book of Jonah. Because it was a picture of us making bad decisions. Jonah was a terrible guy. He's a guy. He's not the role model for your kid. And if you read the book, the book ends very oddly. He is severely mad at God and don't want anything to do with going to the Ninevites. He goes and, preach a, he goes and preaches like eight words or 12 words to the Ninevites and God uses that and revival breaks out amongst this whole people. I'm not trying to bore you today. I just want you to see the setup. Because the Ninevites, no one wanted to go to the Ninevites. But God, the book of Jonah is all about God's divine mercy for every person. He didn't want to go to Nineveh. Had, didn't, didn't want to go there. Why? I don't know. It was because, I'll show you why. Let, 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 let me show you this one. It's, it's Jonah 4, 1 and 2 real quick, and I'll get to, this, to the meat. What I'm trying to tell you, that way you can take it home, because this stuff is just this Bible geek stuff, but I want you to see it. Jonah chapter 4. I think I gave it to you. Down on the list somewhere. Jonah chapter 4, verse 2. So he said, go back to verse 1. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly because why? He, was, he, he did finally say, yes, I'll go. He was swallowed by the fish, spit up on the land. But what's crazy is it displeased Jonah exceedingly and became angry. Verse 2, look what happened. So he prayed to the Lord and said, Ah, oh, Lord, was that not what I said when I was still in my country in Joppa? Therefore I fled previously to Tarshish, for I know that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger, abundant in loving kindness, one who relents from doing harm. The, why, the reason he ran away from God was because he knew that God had the Ninevites on his mind and wanted to extend mercy and grace, and Jonah wanted nothing to do with it. Isn't this crazy? He gets mad at God. But this is a picture of us. 
Because we make decisions all the time to run away from God when God is trying to get us into a bigger picture, a bigger thing, to get us going in a right direction, even though we don't think it's right that we go in that direction. We do the same stuff. All of us in this room, we do the same stuff. If you notice in, in the, in the, in here when it's talking about Jonah, we have this word play going on that he went down to Joppa. He went down into the boat. He went down into the, into the inner most parts of the boat. He fell asleep. He went down, 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 down. He was making decisions all along that was taking him farther and farther and farther and farther away from the will of God. You say, well, Pastor, what's this? All that you're saying, what are you saying? I'm saying this. I want to give you some background because it's just like us. We make decisions all the time to be disobedient to God because we don't want to do what he's telling us to do. And we wonder where our storms are coming from. It's not coming from the devil. It's coming from our own disobedience. We're going to find out next week how to handle the, the enemy, or a couple of weeks, how to handle the enemy. And the enemy does cause storms in our lives at times. But a lot of times it has nothing to do with the devil. It has everything to do with our decisions, our unwise decisions, or our disobedient decisions. Jonah was a man that was being disobedient. This man of truthfulness and faithfulness, acting contrary to his identity. Amen. Many times, like I said, the water is known to these readers as a place of chaos, a place of danger, a place of being wild and unruly and turbulence. <laughs> Listen, I want you to know something today. You and I were never lived in, uh, made to live in the chaos. Man was made to live on the dry land, not in the water. We were made to live in the dry land. Amen. Amen. Remember, your decisions are affecting others. It's affecting others. His decisions started affecting everybody on the ship. You say, well, I don't affect my family. It could affect your family. Well, that don't affect this person. Yeah, it could. It should cause us to pause. It should cause us to pause before we go and understand, you know what? This could cause a lot of problems in people's lives, and it could stop. It should stop us. Amen. So, Pastor, what do I do? Storm stoppers from Jonah. Real quick. Let's go through these. Storm stoppers from Jonah. Number one, storm stopper. Number one, you ready? You got to remember your identity. If you notice, we're going to go back here. He says, you know, Jonah chapter 1, Jonah, the dove, the mild, the peaceful, the innocent one, son of truthfulness and faithfulness. This was his identity. When you spoke the word Jonah, that's what it meant. A one that was faithful, one that was true. But he was acting contrary to his nature. Look what he says. This is how he identifies himself in verse 9. Look at this. So he said to them, I am a Hebrew. I am a covenant person. I am a co the covenant. I'm a part of the covenant people of God. And I fear Yahweh. I fear the Lord, the God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. Again, satire. He's, act, he's acting completely contrary than fearing the Lord. He's saying I'm a Hebrew. He's saying I'm fearing the Lord. But he's acting completely contrary in all of his actions. Well, we won't raise any hands in this room, but how many times do we act not according to our nature and our identity? Huh? How many times do we say we fear the Lord, but we, we're not acting like we reverence and honor God with our lives? Right? I'm a Hebrew. Amen. I'm a Hebrew. He said, I want you to go down to Nineveh, to that vile city, that brutal city. Right? What are we going to say when God asks us to do things? That we don't like to do. Are we going to run to Tarsus? We always say, you know, he was running for his life. No, he was running, he was running, he, he was running from life. 
whenever we're making decisions that, 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 that's, that disobedient decisions. We're not running from our life. We're running from life. We're, we're running not for our life. We're running from it. We're run, I need to run back to life. Amen. Amen. Go and pursue that job. Go and serve them. Go and do this. Jesus is Lord. Last week we celebrated baptism. That was awesome, wasn't it? The word baptism, we get it from the, the word baptism. Babto, <clears throat> Greek babto, and it means to dip or to immerse into. It was used as a textile term, a term with, like, like, like if you had, if this pool of water was, a, was red dye that was up here, this whole the thing was red dye, and we had a white shirt. They would use this, they would baptize it, baptize the shirt, that's how they would, they would dip the shirt, babto, into the dye, into the red dye. Now, what happens to the, to the white shirt? Everything about that takes on the identity of what it's being dipped into. See, that's what happens with you and I in Christ. We get placed in Christ. We get dipped into Christ. And, and now every, we are now identified with him. We're now identified with him. See, Jesus... Come into the chaos. He was dipped into the chaos. That way we don't have to be thrown over the ship and into the chaos. So, so the first thing is i got to remember the storm stopper for Jonah, he wasn't living up to his identity. And, and, and I'm not throwing stones because it's a story about us. We've all been here. But the storm stopper is i got to know who I am. That will keep me from making some really stupid decisions. How many of you know sin's stupid? Sin is stupid, and it will lead you to do stupid things that only harm you. That's why God hates sin. You know why God hates sin? Because it does damage to you. Are you with me? We're talking about Jonah, the Jonah, the Jonah experience today. The Jonah experience. It's the son of faithfulness and innocence. Again, it's like Saturday Night Live. It's, 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 it's historical. It's, Jonah's historical. It's just, it's, it's the story the Hebrews would have laughed a lot because, ha, ha, he's not acting that way. But in the end, when they read it, it would all hook him in. That's, that's what Saturday Night Live is, was about, is about. It's embellishing things about American culture, but it's actually a picture of ourselves and how we respond and how we act. At the end of the day, it's trying to hook us back in. It's what satire does. Trying to reflect something that's in us that needs to change. Making fun of it, a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. The storm stoppers from Jonah. Remember your identity. Number two, he says this, and fear the Lord. He says, he remember your identity and, and, and the fear of the Lord. We don't hear a lot of this taught. The fear of the Lord. What, what is the, when I talk about the fear of God, I'm not talking about some, some anticipation of God's wrath on my life as a son. Right? I mean, come on, let, let's, let's just let's try to redefine that. The word fear here means reverence and respect. I think it was Jesse that posted that up recently. You know, I've messed up. Uh, I, I can't remember. It's, I can't remember. It just left me what it was, but it was, a, it was on Facebook, and it was really good. But basically, I've messed up. i got to get to my dad. Right? The first poor, whenever we fail and mess up and stumble, you know what we got to do? we got to run to the Father, not away from him. How many of us do, we do that? Come on, let's just be honest. A, a lot of people have very, very bad characters of God. And he's there to help us. You so say, what, what's the best picture of God? All you got to read is the, pro the story of the prodigal. It's the best story of the father. We, read, we sung it this morning. He came running down my prodigal road. He came running with a ring and a robe. Grace is the collision, right? That leads me home to the arms of a father who won't let go. What is God's, the fear of God? It's a reverence and respect 
for God. It's a reverence and respect and awe for God. We need to have a healthy fear of the Lord in our lives. We lose that. We need to have a healthy respect for God. And that will keep us from making bad decisions. Even though that he said, I'm a Hebrew, this is my identity, and I fear God. He's not fearing God. He's not respecting God. That's the satire in it. Ha ha, that's not happening. We sing it, but are we doing it? I, I, I want to have a healthy respect and fear of God. Not because I, he's not an angry father. He's a good dad, but he will discipline us. And he disciplines us by his word and, and by his spirit. Not sending bad things your way. Now, God did orchestrate this storm. It says that. But the, at the end of the day, he took him through the storm in order to turn him around. It's a severe mercy that he had. I just want you to understand today that we got to have a healthy respect and fear for God. We need that. Reverence and respect. Look what it says here in Proverbs chapter 1, verses 29 through 31. Look what it says right here real quick. Because they hated knowledge, they did not choose what? They did not choose what? The fear of the Lord. Look what happened, verse 30. They would have none of my course, none of my counsel, and despise my every rebuke. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with, the, with full with their own fancies. What happens when I start making stupid decisions? Really stupid decisions. When I start making disobedient decisions, I start being filled with my own way. Proverbs 14, 27, look what this says up here on on the screen. It's very, very good. Fear, the fear of the Lord, fear of the Lord is a life-giving fountain. It offers escape from the what? The snares of death. What's the fear of the Lord going to do? It's going to get me out of a trap. It's going to keep me out of the trap. Amen. See, you know, many decisions are already made. We just, looked at, we just got to look to the fear of the Lord. What would God do in this situation? What would God do here? What would God say about this? And if we would do that personally, we would keep ourselves out of a lot of problems and a lot of storms. Storms that could have happened, storms that, 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 that you know what, it didn't even happen. Because why? <laughs> I just simply stopped and asked a simple question, what would Jesus do here? I mean, there's, there's truth. I know that was a, 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 a you know, that, that acronym that, you know, that we wore the bracelets and, and we had shirts made and all that, WWJD. But there was something to that. It's saying, hey, what would Jesus do? I need to pause. I need to look. I need to really think about this a second before I launch into it. And those things were reminders for us. To fear the Lord. Huh. Very interesting. Third thing. What happened? How did I storm stop her? You got to cry out in your chaos. You know what's interesting about this story? Jonah gets thrown overboard and God intercepts it. He didn't make it to Tarshish. He never made it there. The storm started raging and God's mercy is seen in it. Even when we mess up, God never leaves us nor forsakes us. This storm ended out turning into a blessing for Jonah. You ever been through a storm that after you came through the storm, you're glad you came through the storm because you learned something about yourself or you learned something in, in, about this? Anybody been there? Now, it didn't have to be that way. I could have been taught all kinds of other different ways, but I made a choice, and God's mercy was there. And Jonah cried out in this chaos. Look what it says there in Jonah chapter 2, verse 1. Then, after all this, see, when you start running away from God, the first thing you want to do is actually encounter God. But see, God's already working to try to get an encounter in order for him to get turned around. Amen. That's how good God is. 
Then, after all that, think about the sailors. They were, all, they were a polytheistic culture. They, all served, they were all calling on their gods. All right, John or James, you, you call it to your God. Hunter, you call it to your God. Hey, make sure you don't leave out that God, Glenn. They were just shooting it up in the air. Hopefully we can get somebody to hear us. <laughs> and then all of a sudden they got this guy that's gone down, 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 making small decisions leading him farther down, asleep. And they said, what are you doing sleeping? Arise, call on your God. (laughs) He's still not. He's still not calling out to God. But God is still reaching out to him. God in his mercy. They knew the storm. This is the reason. This guy's on the storm. And this, this thing's happening because of him. It's his decisions. What did he do? Throw me off. See, I really believe Jonah really wanted to die. I believe he wanted to die. I I believe he he hated the Ninevites so much that he would rather die than go and offer them repentance. That's what the story, it, it is what the story is all about. The story is all about God using a man to go to someone that nobody else wanted to go to to deliver them. That's the God we serve. You can read the book. I I could sit here. I'm literally, we could go chapter, verse by verse over the next four or five or six weeks and I could show you that. I mean, he gets mad at God because of plan. You can read the book. Read the book. The end of it. I mean, it's like like, like it's it's like 90, it's like 195 degrees, right? And all of a sudden, God provides a plan to shade him and he still is grumbling and complaining. And finally, he just said, you care more about your plant than you do about the people. You care more about your comfort than than, than doing what I'm telling you to do. Come on, you can read the book. It's good. It's not my point. But we got to learn to cry out in our chaos. When you get, then, it says, then Jonah prayed. Then. I'm glad. Thank you, Jonah. Thank, I mean, has anybody ever been here? Come on, I've been right here before. You go through the storm, and it's all of a sudden, then you're crying out to God. If we want to go a, get a storm stopper, if we want to get this thing blown over and get this stuff, if I'm going to start making some better choices, I need to start crying out in my chaos. Amen. God is working all things out together for my good. Come on, somebody. God has a plan. I mean, come on, think about this a second. He goes, put that picture back up again on the, where he went to, that, to, to the, the map. 2,500 miles. Gets on the sea that nobody, the, the Jews didn't even want to go there. But gets on a boat to get away from God. He could have been walking on land to Nineveh, but didn't. Gets on a boat and goes 2,500 miles. Now listen to this. Why? He's fleeing from the presence of the Lord. Listen to this. This is what the psalmist wrote. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you're there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. Jonah cried out finally in his chaos. Stay with me a second. What happened? He began to repent. He began... To repent. And you could read chapter 2 in his prayer. He's turning back to God. Jonah was using all of his efforts to run from God. But as soon as he got into really big trouble, he prayed. You ever been there before? Doing all your efforts. Doing what you can. Doing living your life. Not thinking about God. Come on, come on. Running the bus for the kids. and, And life's crazy. And you're going. And prayer never comes to our mind. Until a problem happens. But aren't you glad today that even when I do that, that God still loves me, cares for me, and wants to help me? He prayed. Many times we do our thing, go our own way, like I said. When trouble hits, we pray. I'm going to say this to you. At least you know where to turn. 
let me, let me say this on the other side. Prayer's not a panic button, church. I'm glad for it. Don't get me wrong here. We've all been here, but I'm just trying to help us, encourage us to keep us from maybe getting into a storm. Maybe if we would just cry out in the midst of this stuff, and, and maybe we'd cry out maybe a little earlier, but maybe we may not get in that storm like we are now. Let's not treat prayer as a panic button. Come on, don't beat yourself up. Don't let guilt and condemnation keep you away from God. In the middle of storms, the enemy tries to convince us of things that are not so. He doesn't want us to know our true name. He doesn't want us to remember that we're a son of faithfulness and truth. He doesn't want us to remember that we're, that we're, that we're a dove or we're innocent. We don't, they don't, they don't, they don't, that's not what they, the enemy wants you to forget that. I forgot that before in storms. How about you? Who I am? It's like God wrote a song. Remember that song? Uh, remind me of who I am. All right, it's a song. Sorry. I'm, I, you don't know what's going on inside this brain sometimes as I'm up here. I'm having four conversations and answering myself at the same time while I'm trying to speak. <laughs> I'm serious. It's, this is not good at times up here. <laughs> remind me of who I am. Please. There's a song that says that. Maybe post it on Facebook or something later. But it, it, remind me who I am. I need someone to remind me that I'm a son of true and faithfulness. I need someone to remind me that I'm a, that I'm a child of God. And I, I need someone to remind me. But see, that's what prayer does when I'm praying. One of the important things of prayer is I'm aligning myself up back with the heart of God. Right? Amen. Prayer is like an umbrella. That's how I see it. And when I'm not praying, I'm thankful, thankful for my umbrella. I'm thankful for the umbrella that I have when it starts to rain. But I need my umbrella when the sun's shining too. I need to run to the, and get my heart aligned back up with the Father and, and get my heart attuned back up to, to Dad. And, and, you know, he said, son, you shouldn't be doing this. And son, he'll come and correct me, Right? But, but I need to have prayer. If I'm not paying attention to God, if I'm not doing that, I'm not going to hear him like I need to hear him. And he's trying to get me out of the storm. I need to call upon the Lord. Let us come boldly. Come on. Hebrews 4.16. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that I, my, that I may find grace and find mercy to help in my time of need. I can run to the Father. I don't have to go in there backwards. I don't have to go in there with all mealy mouth. I don't have to go in there just groveling. I can come boldly to the throne of grace. Even when I fail and mess up, I've got a, an advocate. I have the Holy Spirit. I have Jesus. I have the Father that's on my side. I'm a son. Nothing can change that. I just can't. Would you do anything if your kid messed up? Come on. You would take with open arms and bring him back. He's a prodigal father. He's one that runs to the prodigal sons and daughters and wraps his arms around them. Cry out my chaos. Final thing is this take advantage of a do over. I'm talking about how a storm stopper. And we're learning from Jonah here a little bit. Jonah wasn't doing anything. This is stuff that I got out of this as I was reading how the, the, the opposite, the counterfactual, the, 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 the antithesis of this. Take advantage of a do-over. Look what happened here in Jonah chapter 3, verses 1 and 3. He prayed. Jonah chapter 3. Now look at what happened. Now the word of the Lord, what happened? Came to Jonah the what? See, when we're running away from God, we can't hear him. Isn't it amazing? Again, isn't it amazing when we get in our storm, we turn to God, and all of a sudden we start hearing him again. Start hearing him again. I start hearing him again. Oh my, God, it's, it's been a while. Sorry. I've been so, 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 I've been so burdened down and, 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 and all this stuff going on inside of this head of mine and, and, and the clutter. And God, it's so good to hear you. He said the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. Now remember now, in 1.1 it says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai. He said, I want you to go to Nineveh. 
that wicked city, and I want you to preach to it. Saying, verse 2, arise. You see that word arise? Coom. Everybody say coom. It means first things first. The word here, when God says arise, when God says it, arise, comma, and God says it, it's the Hebrew word kum. And it means first things first, do this. Before you do anything else, do this. He said, I'm requiring your obedience. Arise. Go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. Verse 3. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was exceedingly great city, a three-day journey in extent. And he goes. This is how good God is. He goes. He goes and preaches a message. Eight-word altar call. That's all it took. This is what now, this is just for your own, own. This is what he says. And Jonah began to enter that city on the first day's walk. And he cried out and said, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. That's it. Walked out of the city. And God used eight words from a man that was being obedient in somewhat here, trying to do something, and a whole town was experienced a revival. The Bible says even the, I don't know how this all happens, but the cattle even repented. I don't know how that works, but anyway. <laughs> that means everybody got it. But you know what? He, he took advantage of a do-over. You ever been here before? I'm going to take advantage of a do-over. We don't have to live with regret. Brush yourself off. Yea, though a righteous man falls, what? Seven times. What? He gets up. Learn from your mistakes. Take advantage of the wisdom gained through the experience and move forward. Compost pals are great fertilizer for your next harvest. Come on, somebody. The stuff you are going through is just fertile soil for the next thing to prop up. Come on, somebody. The stuff you're going through, the stuff I've gone through, the stuff I'm going through, no matter what it is, it's only the compost. Yes, it's there, but it's compost. And you use it to fertilize your field the next season. Come on. Everybody throwing their stuff at you. Everybody throwing stuff at you. You know what you got to do? Just believe God. God, I thank you. I'm not going to let this get in me. Father, I'm not going to let it get in me. I'm not going to let it get in me. Right? I'm not going to be disobedient to you. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. I think there was a scripture in Proverbs 24. I looked over. It was earlier, Mary Ann. It's right way up on the, well, probably up second page or something in my notes. They have to comb through all my geekness up there and all my stuff I typed down. So I think it's Proverbs maybe 24. I want you to see this. I'm, I'm done. Uh, Matthew, or uh, Matthew. Uh, Proverbs 23, verses 30 through 34. Uh, nope. I'm not sure. Let's go to the next one. Verse 31. Yeah. No, that's not it either. Those are good ones, I guess, if you're struggling. So anyway, <laughs> let me find it here real quick. Just a second. Let me find it. Yeah, Proverbs 24, verse 30. I'm sorry, Marianne. I went by the field of the lazy man, and by the vineyard of the man devoid of understanding. It's 31. So he went by this field. He's looking. Not working. All right, I'm going to read it to you. And there it was, all overgrown with thorns. Its surface was covered with nettles. Its stone wall was broken down. Verse 32. Uh, Proverbs 24. And when I saw it, I considered it well. I looked on it and I received instruction. He saw a man who wasn't taking care of anything he had. And he said he got information by the things that he's experiencing or the things that he's seeing. 
You've got to let your past mistakes or someone else's past mistakes teach us something. Teach you something in the middle of this thing. It's a do-over. It's a do-over. You don't have to live in condemnation. Put it behind you and say, you know what? Listen, I made a mistake. I failed. I get it. I understand. But God, I'm thankful that you're a God of faithfulness to me. I thank you, God, that you never leave me nor forsake me in the middle of the chaos. That you have a fish prepared to swallow me up and spit me out on the dry land, out of the chaos, out of the water, into the place I'm supposed to be living. Thank you. I'm done. But Lamentations chapter 3, this is a scripture you guys all know. Lamentations 3. Through the Lord's mercy, we're not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. Verse 23. They are new. What? What's the next words, church? Every morning I wake up, new day. Uh, the sun woke up. The sun, I woke up this morning. The sun came up. Praise God. I get another opportunity to live. You know what? This morning, I'm going to make a, new, I'm going to make a declaration. I, it's a new day. I'm going, to t- I'm going to take advantage of my do-over. Amen. I'm going to take advantage because great is what? His faithfulness. That's a storm story from Jonah. We learned some things. Storms aren't all all time caused by the devil. Sometimes it's our own unwise decisions and our disobedient decisions. So, well, Pastor, what I do, just stop. Cry out to God in the midst of your chaos. Repent. What's repent mean? Change the way you think. It means change your think, which leads to a change of direction. Go to the Father. Confess it. Father, you know what I'm going through. And right now, I'm changing my ways right now. I'm going in a different direction. I'm learning, man. I'm learning. All of a sudden, yeah, I'm crying out in my chaos. Oh, my, I'm crying out. I'm, li- I, I'm going to remember who I am. I'm going to remember that, that I'm a son. I'm a child of God. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only and I'm not beneath. It may look like I'm going under, but I'm not going under. I'm going over. I am a victor. Hallelujah. Thanks be unto God, which causes me to triumph in Christ Jesus. But thanks be unto God, which gives me the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. If God is for me, who can be against me? If God is for me, who cares who's against me? Hallelujah. And I start stirring myself up back to my identity that I'm a son of God. Well, what if I fail to mess up? Look yourself in the mirror and say, I'm a child of the living God. I'm not perfect. I know, God, this is not right in me. I look in the mirror and I see the deficiency and I see it. But, God, I see you. I see the goal. I see Jesus Christ, the one I'm called to be conformed to. I'm looking in that mirror. And, Lord, I thank you this is changing. And I'm being changed from glory to glory, level to level. I'm going from step to step. I'm not where I used to be, but I'm not where I'm going to be. I'm still moving forward. What do we do? We beat ourselves up. And the next thing you know, we're not crying out in our chaos anymore. And you'd just rather die. Just throw me out into the water. But I'm glad, even, even in my weakest moments, even in my weakest moments, even when I'm weak and I don't feel like crying out, God has a fish for me. And that fish swallows me up and he takes and spits me out, out of the chaos and back onto dry land. God's got a plan. God's got a plan. I'm thankful that I can read Jonah and I can get something out of Jonah. Amen. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. And I'm going to take advantage of my do-over. Because great is his faithfulness. Anybody in here glad, glad he's faithful when I'm not? When I'm not faithful, what? He's faithful. When I'm not faithful, he's, he cannot deny himself. He cannot deny me. He can't deny me. 
Come on, I'm his. And he knew what he was getting when he got me and you. Look at your neighbor and say, you know what? God knew what he was getting when he got you. <laughs> now that's some good marriage counseling right there. I just helped some folks out in this room. I've been wanting to say that for a long time. And the pastor gave me the right to say it. <laughs> Praise God. You're a piece of work. <laughs> yeah, I am. You are a piece of work. Yes, I am. I'm a piece of work. I'm a piece. I'm his workmanship. I'm his piece of work. Hallelujah. Man, I'm telling you, I got some rough edges. Anybody got some rough edges on your life? Come on. But you know what? I'm his, and he's committed to work on me. He's committed to keep that which has been committed to him. He is committed to it, church. Come on. He that begun a good work in us will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. You say, well, I stumbled, and I fell, and I messed up. Get yourself up off the mat. Brush yourself off and get back into the mirror again. Know who you are in Christ Jesus and cry out in the middle of your chaos. And know, listen, I'm thankful for a do-over. Thankful for it. Praise God. Well, that's good. That blessed me. Amen. Let's pray. You guys get anything out of that? Come on. Give the Lord a good hang of praise. Yeah. You know, hey, listen. Thank you for letting me geek out up here at times. I know that may not, that may not excite you, but that does me. You know, seeing sea monsters. and I know that probably don't mean a, 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 a lick to anybody in this room, but that just does something for me. Because I love the Bible. I love the Bible. And it's a beautiful story. And God is trying to, it's, what's amazing is that Jonah is a story about Jesus. I, I, got, I can't go on with this. But listen, Jesus said, listen, just like Jonah was three days and three nights in the, in the belly of a fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And he went into the chaos. He went into the waters. He went into death. And you know what? Death spit him back out on the dry land, out of the waters of chaos, into victory. And guess what? You and I was taken with him. And you was spit out of that fish. When Jesus was spit out of the fish, you was spit out of the fish. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Jesus! Jesus and Jonah and me. Well, it's what he said. It's what he said. He spit me. He sp I'm telling you, man, I spit out on a dry land. I'm out of the chaos. Listen, you, my life may feel like it, but listen, in, in, all, in all reality, you are in Christ and you are out on the dry land. You weren't made to live in the chaos. You were made to live in the dry land. In Genesis chapter 1, the dry land came out of the water before man was ever created because man was never made to live in the chaos. It was made to live on dry land. Am I making sense to you guys? God's divine mercy. Jesus, man. Jesus. He's my story. What's your story, Jesus? What's your history, sinner? What's your future, righteous? Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? I'm not this storm that I'm going through. I'm not the addiction that I am fighting. I am not this situation. It's not who I am. I am not the divorce that I went through. I am not in that. I'm not that thing that tried to label me. I am not the the one that was abused. I am not. I refuse to be uh, to be identified with those things that happened in my child. That's not me. I realize it's there, and, and it was a storm in my life. But that's not me. That's not who I am. Mm. -mm. No, 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 no. Uh-uh, Jonah, son of Amittai. No, Jonah, son of Amittai. Mm-mm. Who was the faithful one, Jesus? He was faithful when I wasn't faithful. He's faithful when I'm not faithful. And my story is found in him. Come on, somebody. What if I failed last week? Well, listen, listen, repent. Change the way you think. 
Run to your dad. Run to your father. Lift your hands in the air. You come boldly to the throne of grace. And you run there. Don't run away from him. You run to him. And you say, Father, I thank you. And I thank you right now, God. I receive my forgiveness. I ask, Father, that you forgive me. And I receive my forgiveness, God, from you. In this day, God, I choose to turn and turn in another direction and go a different way. Father, we thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Come on, let's just worship the Lord a moment. Come on. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We cry out to you in our chaos right now. We cry out to you in our chaos right now, God. There could be people in this room, God, it's in chaos. Chaotic waters, God. Chaotic waters. The unknown, wild, unruly things, God, going on around us. The waves, Lord God, is becoming, the seas becoming more temptuous, it seems. The sea is becoming more temptuous, it seems. It seems by the day the seas become more temptuous, oh God. I thank you so much, Lord God, that you are the master of the sea. You're the master of the sea. You've invited me to walk on the water with you. On top of the chaos. So I give you praise, God, right now for victory in our lives. I thank you, Lord God, right now. I remind myself of who I am. I remind, come on, remind yourself. Come on, look in the mirror right now, church. Come on, let's just not get in a hurry. Let's just look in the mirror right now. Let's look in the mirror right now. Let's look in the mirror right now. Come on, quit seeing your failure. Quit seeing your defeats. Quit seeing your past. And see the one, hallelujah, that's on the dry land. See Jesus. The one that you're conformed, one has been predestined to be conformed to the image of. Just, just think of him. That's the picture. That's the picture of your victory. That's the picture of where you're going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm tired of making stupid decisions. I know, God, that I do. I know that I do. I'm tired, Lord God, of being disobedient. God, I'm not going to be disobedient. I'm going to do what you say. The word of the Lord came to me a second time. Lord, speak to me again. Come on, somebody in this room needs to hear that again. Lord, speak, come on, you might need to say that to God. God, speak to me again and I'll be obedient. Speak to that call again and I'll be obedient. Do what you're telling me to do. I'll, I'll, I thank you for a second chances and do-overs, oh God. I thank you this morning. I thank you for do-overs this morning. Lord, we're going to take advantage of it. I'm not going back. I feel like somebody in this room just saying, you know, you're not going back. Come on, I hear that, I hear that, I hear that, I hear that, I hear that. I hear that. Come on, somebody needs to get I'm not going backwards. I'm going forwards. Come on. Come on. I'm going backwards. And not, a, a, a man that puts his hand to the plow can't look back. He, the, the man that's fit for the kingdom can't find it. People that can't find kingdom fit are people that are, that are not looking. They're looking back and not looking forward. They, they can't find the tailor made of, that, of, the, of, the, uh, of, of the kingdom. It seems like things don't fit right. It just seems like it's not. Can't fit right because you're looking back. Any man that puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom. It's saying, can't find his kingdom fit. The kingdom is to be tailor-made for you. It's to be tailor-made for you to put on. And and when we can't find it, it's because we're looking back. Because we're looking back at our past failures and mistakes. Come on, let's just say that today. I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I'm going forward. My face is forward. my, My eyes are on the front of my head for a reason. My feet point forward for a reason because I'm made to move forward and not backwards. My vision is not to be back. It's to be forward. So I quit turning my head and looking back at what I've done or the mistakes I've made. I'm not my mistake. I am not my mistake. Praise God. Crying out to you, Lord, in my chaos this morning. Crying out to you in my chaos, God. And I thank you, God, even though it looks like it, Lord. I'm gonna get out on the other side of this thing and say, you know what, God? I'm glad I went through it. (laughs) I know this seems odd and crazy, but God, I'm glad I went through that storm. I didn't have to, and and Lord, I wish I wouldn't have to, but on the other side of it, I can look back and I can say, Yes, Lord, I've learned something through this, and I'm stronger because of that storm. 